Welcome to No Buts About It. Another superstar wide receiver has been traded. We're going to talk about that and more up next here on No Buts About It. Hello, everyone. Welcome to No Buts About It. And in the last week when we recorded a day late or late for some reason, Devontae Adams and Amari Cooper had been traded to nice. the New York Jets and Buffalo Bills, respectfully. Today, at like 7 a.m., because I was still at work, it was announced that this man, DeAndre Hopkins, is now a Kansas City Chief. Because if there's something that Patrick Mahomes needed in his life, it was a Hall of Fame wide receiver. And now he has one. So I've heard a little bit of... Uh, Quite a few different takes around this trade. It's a fifth-round pick. Can become a fourth-round pick. Titans and Chiefs are splitting his uh, salary for the last year of his contract. Um, what are your thoughts, Chuck, before I give mine? Yeah, I mean, it. I didn't expect it, first of all. D-Hop wasn't a name that was being thrown around a lot over the last week or so. I mean, if it was, it was one of those names that no one was really talking about as much. I feel like a lot of people were more on the Mike Williams trade. Uh, like a lot of people were talking more about Mike Williams. And then obviously in the weeks prior to that, you had Devonte Adams being moved. And I feel like that being a successful trade going to New York, I feel like that took up a lot of space in media, especially since like the whole meme about the Steelers and losing twice in a week to the Steelers and Devonte Adams, you know, and the connection with Aaron Rodgers, I feel like that took up a lot of space and, so did Brandon Ayuk re-signing and then obviously getting hurt with a possible end of season injury. So there was like a lot of news that was going on in that. So if D hop was in the news, it kind of went under the radar, but um, I didn't expect it. Like I said, I mean, I think it's kind of a sneaky move by Kansas city in a way, because obviously Kansas city has been kind of struggling a little bit in the wide receiver room. Not that they uh, don't have the wide receivers, but rice is still, not going to play this season. As far as I know, I don't think he's expected to come back at any point this season. And uh, that was like one of their main guys. I mean, obviously you have worthy, but Worthy's still young. He's still a rookie. So he's still got to get his feet wet. Pretty sure Juju like hurt his hamstring again, like in the first play of the game for the chiefs. So obviously the wide receiver room over in Kansas city is already pretty slim pickings. So to have somebody like Deandre Hopkins be able to like lead your, uh, locker room especially with a bunch of maybe younger wide receivers or not as experienced talented wide receivers it might be very beneficial for the kansas city chiefs to have somebody like deandre hopkins and if you can only get him at a fifth round pick i don't think it's that bad and i know a lot of people are saying deandre hopkins is washed and i mean he is older but i don't know if i necessarily think he's washed per se i think he just got a bad end of the stick in tennessee just because of all the wide receiver things that they're going on with. I mean, obviously you have Will Levis, you have the whole quarterback carousel that happened last year with Tennessee this year. Will Levis isn't playing up to par. Now he's hurt with a shoulder injury or some sort of arm injury. Mason Rudolph's in and he's getting himself acclimated to the team. And so, I mean, I feel like in this sense, I feel like it's really not that bad of a move for Kansas city. Now there is that chance that Deandre Hopkins probably, I mean, I don't want anybody to expect, and I, I hope that a lot of people don't expect this, but DeAndre Hopkins is not going to play like he's 24 again. I mean, it's just very, very much. He's not, he's never going to be in that Houston Texan prime ever again, but there is that chance that you see that little bit of light, even if it's just a little bit, you might still see that little bit of light. I don't think it's that bad of a trade. I mean, I, like I said, it wasn't one that I was expecting and it does have, a, it's more of like a low risk, high reward kind of offer in my opinion. Yeah, so the way I look at it as is similar similar to you because I've seen people saying like this isn't really that big of a deal. DeAndre Hopkins isn't really DeAndre Hopkins anymore. He's 32 years old. Look at how he's played when he's been with the Titans. And I think a lot of people aren't giving him credit for actually how well he played last season with the Titans. Mm -hmm. um, this year, it hasn't looked great. That's true. Uh, but Will Levis has been struggling. Will Levis has struggled to get the ball to everyone. Tyler Boyd has regressed a little bit. Um, Calvin Ridley has appeared to regress statistically with Will Levis throwing him the ball. So you 
you see these issues across the board. Last year, when Ryan Tannehill and Will Levis were throwing him the ball, remember there was a switch uh, kind of mid-season last year, and uh, DeAndre Hopkins still put up over 1,000 yards with the Titans. He had 1,057 yards on 75 receptions last season. This year he has 15 receptions, 473 yards. So, again, like you said, DeAndre Hopkins isn't going to be that 24-year-old Houston Texans-style uh, receiver. But really, in Kansas City, he doesn't need to be because they still have Travis Kelsey. Noah Gray is getting involved as well at that tight end position. Um, obviously not as much as Travis Kelsey, but he's still a big part of that receiving game. And then Kareem Hunt has carried the run game with Pacheco out. So they have weapons that – not everything is going to be on DeAndre Hopkins. But this is probably the best quarterback that he has had throwing to him since Deshaun Watson with the Texans. And I know we've seen bad Deshaun Watson, but Deshaun Watson used to be a top five quarterback in the league. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was. I mean, I feel like – I mean, I don't know if it necessarily was just him or if it was a lot of the team that was around him. I mean, obviously you had prime DeAndre Hopkins down there in Houston with you. You also had J.J. Watt in your defense at that time as well, and he was kind of in his prime. So, I mean, if not all in his prime, I guess you could probably say. So, I mean, it might have been just the people around him that worked out, but no matter what, I mean, there was a reason why Cleveland invested so much into Deshaun Watson, and that was because they – thought that he was good and i mean mm -hmm. maybe he was down in houston but i don't think he is up in cleveland but yeah i mean i mean d hop was good down there and uh and yeah i don't really i'm not gonna defend deshaun watson as being good uh he yeah, was no good. He's, he's, he, he was, was good he was objectively a statistically good passer on the field whether he was a good person or not that has nothing to do with what he put on the field but DeAndre um, Hopkins. Now he's just a he, bad person and doesn't have good stats, but right. go on. Right. DeAndre Hopkins, he he still has some in it. He's a good route runner still. He's still got that good football IQ um, that we've seen from him. And really, the only thing keeping him out of the Hall of Fame, and I hate that this is a thing, but he doesn't have a Super Bowl. So going to Kansas City is, again, I hate this that this is true, Going to Kansas City is his best chance at getting a Super Bowl right now. They're the last undefeated team. They've won the last two, which, by the way, the last two seasons, the Kansas City Chiefs have added a uh, wide receiver in either free agency or uh, midseason trade in Kadarius Toney and McCole Hardman. Last two seasons, they've won a Super Bowl. DeAndre Hopkins, in my opinion, is the best addition of those three, and he just happened, this, happened to be added this year. This is a much bigger deal than what people are saying it is. He's not just a washed-up guy chasing after a ring. I would not be shocked if DeAndre Hopkins gets a solid 800 yards between now and the end of the season. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Whenever you were talking about number, like when you threw out a number, my first number that came to my head was also 800. I mean, obviously, I don't think he's going to get 1,000, but I definitely think they're going to lean on him a lot. And hopefully, maybe with uh, – D hop being covered a lot more. Maybe it'll open up a little bit more room for Kelsey. I don't know what's been going on with him, but he's been not performing up to typical Kelsey standards of the last couple of games. So maybe it'll help having Deandre Hopkins out there a little bit more. Like, you, like we've said, he's not the same wide receiver as he was back when he was with Houston, but he's still a pretty talented wide receiver. Maybe it'll help open up that room for players like Kelsey. Or even Hunt, even though Hunt's been having really big numbers, maybe he'll have even more big numbers, maybe have even bigger standout games. And uh, who knows? But, I mean, obviously, I, I I feel like everybody can agree with this. I feel like most people don't want Kansas City to succeed because they have the last two seasons and people want new teams to kind of fresh blood in there. I mean, obviously, it's kind of a similar with the 2010s with New England. People are just kind of sick of seeing New England. But, obviously... You know, if you have like a team like I do in Retro Bowl where you just keep winning Retro Bowls, you might as well just keep trying to win Retro Bowls. I mean, why not, you know? Retro Bowls. So, yeah, I think I think this is a great move by the Kansas City Chiefs. They're one-year rental for a future Hall of Fame wide receiver. Um, 
not paying a whole lot. Fifth fifth round pick, fourth round at the most. Potential potential to win a Super Bowl. I understand it. Another wide receiver though, who the Kansas City Chiefs did actually ask about. They were interested in, and I've I've heard rumors that he's on the trade block. He's coming off of IR today. Is Mr. Cooper Cup, who uh, he's actually been tied with the Steelers. So Cooper Cup, obviously, uh, a few seasons ago in 2020, 2021 season, I believe it was, yes, he was the triple triple crown uh, receiver, most touchdowns, most receptions, most yards. So uh, great player. Great player to have in the locker room. Puka actually came out and said that he hopes Cooper Cup doesn't get traded. The Steel or the Chiefs looked into him, and the Rams reportedly rumored, rumored reportedly, this they wanted a second round pick, and also Cooper Cup's contract is a lot bigger than what DeAndre Hopkins's contract is. So the Chiefs would have had to take on more money. They weren't interested in that. They said we'll go over to Tennessee. We'll see what they have to say, and obviously they got something done. But, Chuss, my question is for you. Since the Steelers are rumored, and I've seen some YouTube pages saying the Bengals are rumored, I don't think the Bengals are involved in this at all. I don't think the Colts are involved in this at all. So I'm not, we're not even going to talk about that unless something happens. That would be a really weird tra- – if that's the trade the Bengals choose to make right now, I'm going to be mad. But anyway, the yeah. Steelers <laughs> – the Steelers um, are in this trade, and we've we've had the Steelers in pretty much every wide receiver trade rumor that has happened. They were involved with Brandon Ayuk, who is now out for the season officially. Chris Godwin is also out for the season, if you guys mm-hmm. missed that news. Uh, but Steelers need a wide receiver. They've been in every trade rumor. Uh, what, what do you think? What would you be willing to get? Would you be willing to give them that second-round pick? Uh, well, the first to start, no, I wouldn't be able to get, I wouldn't be willing to give him a second round pick. I feel like giving the Rams a second round pick is kind of robbery in a way. I mean, obviously I think in the, in the reports that I was reading was that Cooper cup, the trade with Cooper cup, LA would be willing to retain a portion of his salary as well as give them Cooper cup in exchange for a second round pick. And even then I feel like that's a little bit too much they're thir- he's 31. He's the same age as a lot of these other wide receivers that are moving around. I believe he's 31. Maybe I'm wrong, but I know he's in his thirties. So he's older. Obviously he's had a lot of struggles with injuries. I mean, obviously we've just talked about, it. he just came off IR. Uh, if you go back and look at a lot of his season stats, obviously a lot of them have games where he's not playing because he's hurt. So he's a player that typically gets hurt a couple, like once a season. And, and that, that kind of sucks because if he didn't get hurt so much, he would have probably unbelievable numbers because we saw what he could do in 2021. So would I give a second round pick? No, but I think that something could be worked out where he could be given a little bit lower. And I think that they would be okay with that because I, I understand the Cooper cup is like such a high profile name. Obviously, we talked about being triple crown winner. Well, not triple crown winner, but being a triple crown <laughs> receiver. He, he was not the triple count, crown winner. Uh, that would be cool, though. Imagine being a dual sport winner. That would be actually kind of dope. <laughs> Cooper Cup horse race. Anyway. Um, He's, he is the horse. He, yeah, he, he is. beat all the horses. <laughs> Cooper Cup and whatever horse name wins the Kentucky Derby. Okay. Anyway, um, I think Cooper Cup is a really talented wide receiver, but I think LA is asking a little bit too much for him. And I think that it might be scaring some teams off. Obviously, I think it probably did scare Kansas City off a little bit because not that Kansas City really needs the picks right now, I don't think. I mean, obviously, you would probably may want the pick for a wide receiver again or maybe another position, but Kansas City seems very complete. So they could probably forfeit that pick, but like somebody like Pittsburgh might genuinely need that pick. I mean, obviously our defense is pretty good, but we might need another offensive lineman. We might need a running back. We might, you know, want to invest in the future and get a quarterback with that second round pick. I mean, there's so many options that we might want to utilize for that second round pick. That I don't know if Omar Khan, who is known as the quote unquote Khan artist is willing to be able to give up a second round pick. I feel like if we were to give a second round pick, I think it would be a situation where Cooper Cup's salary is like 
very, very much retained. But also I feel like in a situation, we might also have to give something back to just to clear up cap space because like you said, Cooper cups contract is pretty big. So, I mean, I don't know what wide receivers uh, or not wide receivers. Well, maybe wide receivers. I don't know what positions in general, whether that's wide receivers or not, we would, the Steelers organization would be willing to give up to clear up that cap space. I mean, we have some, but I, I don't know how much we would be able to work with, with the cap room, but I would love to have him here. I think Russell Wilson being able to throw to Cooper Cup and George Pickens would be a phenomenal. Cooper Cup's a great blocker, especially considering that at times George Pickens doesn't give it his all. So Cooper Cup could at least pick up the slack. <laughs> a little bit. Um, Cooper Cup also, just like we said, very good wide receiver. And if he doesn't have to do the whole load, uh, kind of like how the Rams had to had with Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup last year. I mean, I feel like having Pickens and Cup would really open up the wide receiver room even more for Russell Wilson and um, and even like the run game and whatnot, especially for this season. But I feel like the Steelers would also have to invest in the idea that they want to win this year or win now with what they have, because under the circumstances, I'm assuming we're not probably going to have, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I'm not assuming we're going to have some of these quarterbacks next year. So, I mean, I don't, I don't really know, but like you're going to have to hope that, you win a lot this year. You go big this year. That's why I don't know if the Steelers are actually going to go for him because I feel like they'd be giving up an asset of a second round pick and they would have to like really truly hope and believe that they can win it all this year. Because I feel like at that point, like if it's all for not, you're going to look like, and like I said, I, I hate to disrespect the jets like this because stands stands our boy, but you end up like the jets who are now two and five and maybe like not, I mean, right now we have a five and two record going in, going into this upcoming week against the Giants, but going forward, like even if you finish with like 13 or 14 wins and you win a playoff game, if you don't win past that, it might be a bust. And then you lose your couple quarterbacks, got to figure out who you're signing, who you're bringing, who you're keeping, who you're getting rid of. And at that point, it's like, I don't know. I don't know. So but I'd love to see him here, but I think there are some teams that are tied to him that aren't Pittsburgh as well. I feel like now with Godwin being hurt and most likely being out for the rest of the season, I feel like Tampa could be a really good landing spot for him as well. So don't count Tampa out in that talk. Uh, but when it comes to Cincinnati, I, I don't understand how he would be tied to Cincinnati <laughs> at all. Um, I feel like in a situation, it would have to be something crazy. Like T Higgins gets traded for like a second round pick. And then they use that second round pick to flip it for Cooper cup, which wouldn't really make a lot of sense. But I mean, if you guys have the cap room, I guess, but get I older at the position. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I, I just, I just I think need it's bizarre. I mean, we just need wide receiver help. We don't even care about getting older at the position. George Pickens is our best guy. And then we had Calvin Austin drop a ball during that Sunday night football. So we, we kind of need the wide receiver help. I mean, yeah, Van Jefferson did get a touchdown, though, guys. I mean, shout out Van Jeffy. But, Against um, his dad's uh, wide receiver group. Yeah, exactly. So there you go. But, but we could send, like, uh, we could uh, we could send maybe Van Jefferson back to L.A. Maybe we can get Cooper Cup with, <laughs> with in that trade package or something. But, yeah, I don't know. I think I think the pick is a little too much. But maybe depending on how I, – I don't know also if the Rams are that desperate to get rid of Cup like some of these other teams are. A lot of these other teams are just kind of dumping and getting whatever they can. I don't think LA is necessarily looking to get rid of Cooper cup. I think they're just kind of exploring options. So I don't want anybody to fully commit to the idea that Cooper cup is going to get moved at all because Cooper cup is a pretty big part of the LA Rams locker room, as well as a pretty, you know, key part of the offense. I mean, you know, put Puka Nakua aside. I mean, Cup was that offense for many of years. And just because Nakua blew up last year doesn't mean that Cup could could still outshine him next year when they're both healthy and whatnot. So, and um, and, Mc, and McVay really likes him as well, as far as I know. I mean, obviously, he's that Super Bowl MVP. Obviously, you're going to want to hold on to your Super Bowl MVP until he retires. And I don't think LA fans would be really happy with letting him go unless it, the price was right. So, I don't know. We'll see. And we'll see what other teams around the league want to do but i think if it is a team it would be a team that really wants to make a push and i guess the only team that really kind of would need that push right now would be if would be pittsburgh i mean you, you look at the teams around the league i don't know if any other teams other than maybe tampa i guess but but like even long term would you even need that extra wide receiver if godwin comes back but a lot of people are saying godwin might not come back next year because he might go somewhere else but i don't know I don't know. I mean, is there a team that sticks out to you that like is making like a 
like a, I mean, it's it's week it's week eight. Do you, is there any teams, Josh, that stick out to you that have a little bit uh, like are maybe like four and three? I'm I'm trying to think of teams that are like maybe not there yet, or maybe like a little bit below 500 that just need a little bit of a push with a Cooper Cup wide receiver. I think the Buccaneers are a good one. Um, yeah, because Chris Godwin is going to be a free agent next year, and you don't know if he's going to resign with you. Um, I don't know that Cooper cup can create the same production as Chris Godwin, but they're similar in ages. I think they're the same draft class as well, if I'm not mistaken, but, um, Chris Godwin's a few years younger. He's three years younger, but, um, the, but yeah, the Buccaneers, I mean, Mike Evans is getting older, closer to retiring, getting beat up. Um, that's that's really the only team that's competitive right now that really sticks out to me. Yeah, because I mean, but, you, you go down the list of teams that are competing, and most of the teams that are competing have like good cores. I mean, De- mm-hmm. in Detroit, I feel like they're fine. Um, now Detroit needs Detroit needs a pass rusher. Is who they what they need? Yeah, to but like I, I'm we're talking about wide receivers here. I don't think Detroit I know I need know. a wide receiver. I I mean Minnesota wouldn't need a wide receiver. I mean, even in our division alone, you guys don't need a wide receiver. I mean, maybe Baltimore, but like, I, I feel like, I guess maybe Baltimore, but yeah, because I mean, Zay Flowers did get beat up a little bit. He stayed in, but I don't I mean, know how severe that injury I, I, was. That's gonna linger. I'd be sick. I'd be absolutely sick if Cooper Cup went to the Ravens. I'd be sick. But <laughs> I, um, yeah, I mean, you Ravens, know, though, maybe, he's not gonna go to the Browns. And that's just our division. I was just thinking of the North no. teams. But I, I'm th- sitting here li- listening to you talk, and I'm thinking about this. I think Cooper Cup is who people thought DeAndre Hopkins is. I think these two players are switched. And this isn't this isn't something I've like deeply looked into. This is just something I'm thinking about because the complaint against DeAndre Hopkins with the Chiefs trade going down is that he's older, he's injury prone, and that he's not the same guy he used to be. Cooper Cup is 31 years old. He has not had a 1,000-yard season since 2021. Which was the Triple Crown year. Yeah. In 2022, he had 812 yards. In 2023, he had 737. And this year, he has 147. He has struggled with injuries, which people people were saying DeAndre Hopkins has injury issues. DeAndre Hopkins has not been injured other than a training camp MCL uh, grade three tear in earlier this year. He had not been injured since 2022. So I, I feel like Cooper Cup is that name that we're like, it's Cooper Cup, but really Cooper Cup isn't that guy anymore he's not like this high high tier wide receiver that we he's still very good don't get me wrong like a lot of teams would be improved by him uh buccaneers ravens would both be improved by getting him i think but i I don't know that he is that triple crown like definitely hall of fame wide receiver that people are making him out to be in this trade and then on top of that i pulled up his contract and you would have two more years with him. He doesn't become a free agent until 2027. Uh, there is a potential out after this year at three years, 70 million with 22 million dead cap. But if you don't take that out, then it's about 28 million a year on your cap hit for the next two years. That's huge. I think if uh, DeAndre Hopkins' contract was like that, you wouldn't you wouldn't bring him in. You wouldn't bring him in at all. You wouldn't even think about it. No, probably not. I mean, and now there's that might be why some of these teams are looking at this and going, no. (laughs) Yeah, and not only that, but with the cap being high, and on top of that, the price of a draft pick for it, it's not like they're they're asking for a fourth or a fifth round pick. Like I feel like that would be much lower, especially given the contract size. I don't know what DeAndre Hopkins' contract size. What, what's his contract size look like again? Do we do? Uh, I believe it is eight million, and then this is the last year. But since I think Kansas City only had four million dollars in cap space, so that means Kansas City is probably only paying 
about four million of that eight million. Uh, his cap hit is four million this year. Oh, excuse me. Uh, the Titans are paying four million of his contract. Then the Chiefs are paying three mil three point two million of it uh, on their cap hit. So they've they've split it fairly evenly. That's four million and three million with some change, but um, about eight million total. So yeah, it's a big difference. I, it is a big difference. That's why I asked because I figured. You know, I don't, I don't know if those same people, I mean, obviously given he's only on his last year of his contract as well compared to Cooper cup, who's got a couple more years left. Maybe that's why they think that the price should be higher, but I don't know. I, I I just think, I I think our second round pick is a little too steep for somebody, his age, somebody, like you said, that's very injury prone that a lot of people are mixing up with D hop and yeah, I don't know. I, I, that's yeah. It's, it's not Cooper's fault that he keeps getting hurt. And he seems like a good player, good leader, great guy on the field. It's just he can't stay away from injury. And that that's part of the game. And it, it sucks, but it's a reality. So I just – looking at that and kind of talking about it with you, that's kind of surface-level thought that I, want, that I want to toss out there maybe. But um, let me know what you think down in the comments. Are you – do you people think that uh, Cooper Cup is kind of who – the media is kind of picturing DeAndre Hopkins as right now. I think that might be part of our issue here. We'll see what happens. Maybe they're both just old and injury prone. But either way, let's move on to a segment. Oh, man, Chuss. I, I wish I hadn't have gone to bed during Sunday Night Football because when I went to bed, I was thinking, man, Russell Wilson is really bad at football. We were right all along. Justin Fields should have started. And I wake up, and it was like I had been transported back to, like, 2014. Russell Wilson is out there slinging, slinging balls around. And uh, yeah. the Steelers beat the New York Jets. Uh, Stan was there for oh, – I, I was kind of hoping you would post that. that. That's awesome. Yeah. It's me and Stan the Jet fan for anyone that's new. Yes. They were at the game together at Acrisure Stadium. And Stan said he was going to cry. It was so beautiful, the, the way the Jets were putting things together. And then the Jets' defense crumbled, and Russell Wilson just he dialed it up, man. I went back and watched some of it. Those throws he was making in the second half, that was like prime, prime Russell Wilson. Um, so we were wrong about that, maybe. I, I'm a big guy. I'll admit that I, I'll admit that I was wrong. I thought I thought he was gonna come out there and flop. I was making memes, and at first, yeah, he did he come out. Me, flop. he was sending me memes, and then still sent the memes after Russell Wilson cooked. So it made it even dumber. So, <laughs> but but listen, I, yeah, no, I agree. I agree. We were both right. I mean, so I guess take me through the Steelers fan experience of watching the first half Russell Wilson, where he's like. He's throwing the balls, and they're going everywhere except towards the receiver. You've got Mike Tomlin on the sideline, like, looking like, what the heck was that? Uh, I mean, it, it, it looked bad in the first half. It did. Yeah. And then, yeah, keep going. The second half, he, the Jets' defense just crumbled. And I know they've got a ton of injuries, but maybe Robert Sala wasn't the problem over in New York. We're going to have to start having that conversation. Or maybe – uh, the defense depended more on Robert Sala than we thought. Maybe Jeff Ulbrich can't be the defensive coordinator and the head coach and the personnel manager all at the same time. It's got to be a lot. That's got to be a lot of stress. But let let me know what you what what were you thinking as a Steelers fan seeing Russ kind of metamorphosize into a butterfly? Yeah, so it was weird. I mean, first of all, first and foremost, I had a couple of of people that really didn't like Russell Wilson. And I want to be the first to admit that even though I, I thought it was a bad move to start Russell Wilson, I never thought or wanted his downfall to ever occur. Whereas a lot of Steelers nation did because they wanted fields to start. I had a couple of guys really believe that by making a statement by booing at the game, that that was going to be 
what, you know, like them showing their strength and showing that, you know, Justin Fields needs to start. And I, I thought that was kind of stupid. I mean, look, I, I don't necessarily, I didn't necessarily agree with the decision, but I wasn't going to boo Russell Wilson when he came out. And I like, it, it's just, it's just not in it for me. I mean, he's going to be quarterback one. And if he can lead us to the promised land, then I'm going to root for him. It's no different than how Mitchell Trubitsky was. I mean, I'm not a big fan of Mitchell Trubitsky last year, but if he was going to win us a game, I was going to cheer for him. Obviously he didn't, but I was still going to cheer for him. <laughs> um, so, but that being said, uh, so first of all, Russell Wilson went out and he didn't look too hot. I mean, obviously we, we got a field goal to start. Um, it looked like it was going to be a very big field goal game again. And I was like, oh, great. Every time, third and goal, whatever. Oh, third down. Oh, kick out. Oh, wow. Yep, go kick a field goal. Just feel like a lot. There was, was going to be a lot of field goals. And there was, at, at least at the beginning. And uh, things looked weird. He was He was getting some passes, but then there was a drive that made Steelers fans in the stadium really mad. And it was back-to-back plays that Russell Wilson threw the passes right into the ground. And Josh, I don't know if you saw those, but I don't know what he was thinking, but he threw them right into the ground. And, and I started having flashbacks to last year. I was like, this, this guy's no different than what we had last year. Why are we starting him? Why are we starting him? And I was panicking. I was really mad. Everybody around me was like, this guy stinks. This guy's bad. And then like in the end zone, he had like a, he had a missed throw for a touchdown, which I don't at looking back, I don't necessarily blame him for that. Um, I don't remember what play it was. It was like it's like a third, third and goal. He threw a pass. I think it was like supposed to be intended for like Calvin Austin, but Calvin Austin fell or something. And then it went at like Van Jefferson's legs, like at like close to his feet. And like people were like, Oh, it wasn't even near Van Jefferson, but it was actually intended for Calvin Austin. But <laughs> it, it was just like a it was just like a whole thing. So I don't know. I mean, but point being is that like, I feel like some people, like when you're watching it, it, it gets kind of hard to like, with, depending on where you're at, you're like, Oh, at least in the stadium. Like, cause when you're with like friends or family or what, like following along on Twitter or whatnot, uh, you can kind of get like a better perspective, especially when you're watching it on TV. But when you're not watching it on TV, you don't really, you can't really see it happening other than on the scoreboard and on replays and stuff. But at the first half, he didn't look too hot. Obviously, we were losing. I think that the leverage penalty that happened during the game was a little questionable. I don't think Minka actually pushed off on whoever the lineman was. And I agree with Danny Smith. He's the glue guy. A lot of people have been calling him the glue guy. He's been he was yelling. He was getting all Bill Cower like on the sidelines out there. Like, dude would not let the referees go about it. It was awesome. I loved it. I loved the energy that Danny Smith gave on Sunday Night Football. It was unbelievable. And uh, actually, it ended up working out in our favor because even though we didn't get the blocked extra point, we did get a blocked field goal later on in the game. So it made up for it, and it was really funny. But yeah, uh, then all of a sudden in the second half, Russ just started cooking. I mean, he had a really he had some great passes to George Pickens. George Pickens looked happy because George Pickens is always like I'm always open, and then he always he's always open. Yeah, and then he sure enough actually like played like he actually meant it. And Russ was really opening the field a lot. Uh, Najee. Uh, looked like a competent running back because there's a meme that I have on my phone that's like a weird like Michael Jordan. I would have to throw it up on the screen, but it, it's just like another zero yard gain for Najee Harris. And it's like that, you know, the Michael Jordan meme where like or not Michael Jordan. It's like it's one of them. It's like it, he has his like arms out or whoever it is. I don't remember. I have no idea what you're talking All about. All right. It doesn't matter. I It, it, it doesn't <laughs> matter. But uh, uh, yeah, I'll I'll. I'll uh, I'll I'll have to find it. It's uh, oh Dwayne Wade. It's freaking Dwayne Wade. It's Dwayne Wade and LeBron. That's who it was. It, was, it wasn't Michael Jordan. I knew it was a Miami Heat thing. I always think it's freaking like Michael Jordan because of the red and black. It's not. I apologize. I apologize. Not not. They don't that. even look the same. What? They don't even look the same. What do you mean? Uh, no, I'm just, I, I, I know they don't look the same, but like <laughs> in my head, it doesn't matter. I don't even remember what, what the point of that whole point was, but, oh, it was the, the meme, another zero yard. Yeah, there was that. And then Patrick was Dwayne Wade going like this. SpongeBob was in the background. It was like this whole animated thing. And the meme was that another zero yard game for Najee Harris. So the whole meme was that Najee Harris couldn't run. Well, boy, did he run on Sunday night football. He looked great. Jalen Warren was opening up the play a playing field. Obviously Russell Wilson can't run. So he's not like fields where he can scramble, but 
right because Russ is older, but I mean, he's still able to open up the field enough that like he's getting plays done. I mean, Fryermuth was getting involved, Darnell Washington was getting involved. You know, Calvin Austin, although dropped the ball, he was getting involved. Van Jefferson had a touchdown. I mean, a lot of these players were like really getting involved. And I really liked that. Not that Fields wasn't already doing that, but I liked it looked really competent when Russell Wilson was doing it. And it really looked good. I mean, obviously, I think I don't know how Justin Fields would have performed against the Jets. I, I don't. But Russell Wilson really knew how to pick them apart. And Aaron Rodgers we got into his head really quickly, especially with Beanie Bishop. Beanie Bishop had two interceptions. An undrafted free agent out of West Virginia had two interceptions. It is probably like a steal of a cornerback that I could ever have thought of. And Buddy was unfreaking real Beanie Bishop. So, I mean, it's just it's just really funny to, to see the team formulate into what it was. And, I mean, obviously, like, I mean, TJ Watt was there, but there was a lot of swats. There was a lot of bat downs. There was a lot of, like, really good – like tackles by the defense. Peyton Wilson was really good at tracking yesterday. I don't know what it was. Peyton Wilson was struggling a little bit at the beginning of the season. Peyton Wilson started tracking the ball. He, he's just, if you look back, there was a guy that uh, I don't remember his name, but there was a guy on uh, Instagram that posted a video kind of like breaking down how Peyton Wilson would like formulate his runs. Like he would watch the quarterback and then like he saw the pass happen, like with immediate, like in the way that he would pivot himself, like just was like really good. And I, I like I said, it, everything just like looked like it was working, and to have back to back weeks with thirty plus points with two different quarterbacks is pretty dang impressive. And it shows that your quarterback room has depth. With God forbid, if an injury does occur, which obviously I don't want an injury to occur, but in the event that Russell Wilson went down, Fields could probably take over. And I don't know what that says for the future. I I would like to think that Russ continues to cook, uh, you know, but. We got the Giants on Monday Night Football who have been kind of surprising as of late. So I'm kind of concerned and curious to see how that goes. Uh, Russell Wilson also then has the bye and then goes and plays Washington, which they have been playing some really good ball. And then we have four division games in a row. So there's a lot of tests for Russell Wilson coming up. I mean, the Jets have been struggling. They 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 got a new coach. They're trying to get a new system in with Devontae Adams and whatnot. They obviously had some injuries in the game. Uh, prayers up for that one lineman that got a neck injury that happened during the game during the interception. I don't really remember what exactly occurred or who got hurt, but there was a lineman or some sort of uh, offensive player that got hurt during the game that ended up being taken out on like a stretcher on like a neck neck brace. And um, yeah, prayers up to him, but like the jets are obviously dealing with some injuries as well. But um, I, I think the Steelers will be fine on Monday night football, but I think the real tests are coming up after the bye. So after that, we can kind of see, well, Russell Wilson stands, but if he plays like he did against the Jets, I, I don't think we'll have anything really to be worried about. Yeah, so that was that lineman that Chess is talking about was Xavier Newman for the New York Jets. He has been placed on IR, obviously neck injury, not something you really want to play around with. Um, someone with the Steelers, though, that I wanted to, like, I guess, applaud and maybe maybe uh, Chess will too. And I'm glad that you mentioned Beanie Bishop. Beanie Bishop, like you said, undrafted free agent, really, done, did really well. But Ryan McCollum, your guys' fourth string center, is that that's his name, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, he, 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 uh, yeah. I thought he played pretty well. I really thought that the Jets' pass rush was going to target him at the center position. And maybe I haven't watched closely enough. Maybe he didn't play all that great. From what I saw, though, I thought he played well. I thought he looked good, especially considering he's a fourth string, third string center. Mm -hmm. um, Zach Frazier is, I believe, out again this week. So, uh, you know, that jet that, like you mentioned, that Giants uh, team has a surprise. They're, they've got a good pass rush as well, and that O-line is going to need to stick together again. Uh, Ryan McCollum, though, I think showed that he he can do it. He can stick it with him. Mm -hmm. Again, he's not yep. going to be he's not going to be your starter uh, level guy, but he can work his way there. Is he is he a rookie as well, or has he been around for a while? He you know? has. Um, he went. No, he's been around for a little bit. He went to college, uh, and I think he graduated in like twenty twenty. So like I think he would have been around that draft class. Let me let me double check that. Uh, yeah, he definitely got. He's like he's like mid twenties. He's yeah twenty six, and he was drafted. 
he got uh undrafted free agent. Okay. By the Texans. Oh, that's another twenty one. Yeah, you guys have you guys have done a lot of good work with your uh, undrafted free agents then, because I thought I thought he played really well. Just wanted to shout him out. Yeah, and, and I think and I think um, it shows a lot with the the team going forward. It looks like morale's pretty high. Uh, George Pickens looks like his morale's high. A lot of people look really excited. Najee got himself in a little bit of trouble. Uh, he he said he people were talking about a video like that he he he, he slipped he slipped the, he slipped some some stuff out by accident and uh, like at the press conference and mm. uh, he might have gotten fined for that. It was kind of kind of uh, seemed like he was very happy though, like very uppity. So definitely good morale over in the locker room. It didn't seem like anybody went into the press conferences like down spirited. Everyone seemed pretty motivated and high ups. So and uh let a little loose so <laughs> but uh which is good which is good especially considering everything that's been going on so going going to going a bit deeper here with mccollum i just looked it up out of curiosity he he was uh brought in by the lions in 2021 didn't wasn't anywhere until 2024 went to the steelers on their practice squad he actually only had a 48.1 offensive grade against the New York Jets. I mean, I thought he looked a lot better than that. Maybe I missed something, and that's fine. But um, like I said, I, I had to go to sleep to go to work. So maybe maybe in the second half he fell off or something. But I, I thought he played well from what I'd seen. Um, hopefully he continues to improve. We'll see what happens, though. Yeah. Next up, though, we'll see. unless you got, you got something else to add? No, no, I just said, yeah, we'll okay. see. Okay. The Bengals. Then boys went into Cleveland. And for the first time in Joe Burrow's NFL career, for the first time since 2017, the Bengals beat the Cleveland Browns in Cleveland. So it was a historical game. The boys got it done. So happy. And you know what? You know what the first play? By the way, Tom, Tom Lentz, I heard what you said about the Bengals. The game was going to be boring. It was going to be a snoozer. Well, do you know how many kick returns there have been this season for touchdowns? Three. Do you know how many of them were in the Bengals-Browns game? One by Mr. Charlie Jones out of Purdue University. That means 33% of kick returns this season in the NFL have been by Cincinnati Bengals players. Mm, yeah, and and you so, want to you want to tell us the score of that that amazing game that occurred? Hey, score 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 doesn't equal a uh, bad game. It was 21-14. Yeah, scoring doesn't scoring doesn't equal a good. Game. It was a defensive <laughs> battle. Oh, defensive, it was a defensive, defensive battle. battle. My dad, in fact, did take a nap during that game. And honestly, when he woke up in the first half, he said that he didn't miss anything. And honestly, he was right. Nothing really happened in that first half. But you can elaborate if you thought anything impressed. Other than your little kick return that happened. At the beginning My of the little game. kick return? Yeah, your 32% that, kick return that happened at the beginning of the game. And nothing else happened for the rest of the game. I that well kick return, I... I was sitting there with my Bengals beer mug that says Butsy on it. Uh, and I was I was all in my corner nook, premium football watching area. And then all of a sudden, Charlie Jones gets the kick return. And he starts going. He reaches the 20. I lean forward. He reaches the 30. I'm getting ready to get 40. Oh, I'm up on I'm I'm jumping up and down. I was screaming. I was yelling. I was so excited, man. That is the most excited I have been to all watch season. a Cincinnati Bengals play right uh, there. What? Oh, I thought yeah, you said right all there. Season. Oh, I thought you. Could, I mean, oh, I mean, like all time would be crazy though. All time know. would be crazy. No, that was all season. All season. It's been, but that that was that was a beauty, and I loved it. I loved it. So, but let's let's uh break down some important notes from that game first of all. So first of all, things I said needed to happen. Bengals needed to come out quick. 
and get some points on the board. Well, I was talking about the offense doing that. The kick return obviously helped that. Offense struggled a little bit, though. And we know that the Browns have a good defense. They've had a good defense for a little bit now. Miles Garrett's a stud. Uh, Greg Newsom's out there. You've got um, – what's his name? I Don't make don't, – Denzel Ward. I'm sorry, Denzel. You're, you're a stud. I'm sorry I forgot your name. He, he was on Jamar Chase, and Jamar Chase got open. Jamar Chase figured it out, and it worked out. I said, you're going to have to block the run, and we didn't know what Nick Chubb was going to do. Nick Chubb, uh, first game back in a long time. I thought Nick Chubb, while he uh, did have some okay, st- he put up some good stats, only had 22 yards, got a touchdown. They gave him 11 attempts. Bengals held him to two yards per attempt. And that's about what I expected. I expected Nick Chubb to get about 10 yards. But, you know, that Bengals run defense we saw at the beginning of the year, that could have easily been 60 yards and two touchdowns. So the fact that they held him to two yards, loved it. Great. Put the ball in Deshaun Watson's hands. They did it. Deshaun Watson got hurt. Dorian Thompson Robinson was the backup. And they they made his life heck. Hell. Hell even. Le- low, made it heck. Level, they made it a level below heck. Hell. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> oh, <laughs> scary. That's how bad it was. Anyway, I I liked I liked what I saw. They followed the cues. Now, Orlando Brown Jr. He was going up against Miles Garrett all day for the most part. Gets hurt. It's like, oh shoot, Miles Garrett's about to break open. Well, he didn't. When Miles Garrett was up against our rookie Amarius Mims, Amarius Mims held up against him, and Cody Ford, our sixth lineman. He came in, and he didn't look as good as Orlando Brown Jr. did, obviously. Wasn't expecting him to. But Miles Garrett had zero sacks. Didn't Joe Burrow never hit the ground because of Miles Garrett, and that's that's huge. That's a huge move. Um, Orlando Brown Jr. might play this week. We don't know yet. He's questionable, but we're optimistic. Geno Stone, also injured, looked, looked pretty bad. Got an interception, got injured. We're like, oh, shoot, that guy's out for the season. Time for Dejon Anthony and Tyson Anderson to step it up. But Geno Stone is expected to uh, be able to play soon. Neither of them are hitting IR, so that's a win. But what do the Bengals need to do to beat the Eagles? And trust this is a team you follow a little bit, the Eagles. But um, yeah. I, think, I think what the Bengals are going to need to do is find out where that offense is from the Chiefs and Ravens games went that put up 30 plus points because this Eagles off this Eagles offense does not play around and they're going to put points up on the board. They're going to find a way. You've got Saquon out there having a career year. AJ Brown is a stud and Cam Taylor Britt, I don't know what happened to him, but he has been struggling. Devontae Smith is a stud that DJ Turner is probably going to be covering and DJ Turner, he's he's hit or miss. It's only his second year, so I'm still kind of easing him in, but I, I'm nervous. I, I'll be I'll be truthful. I'm, I'm nervous about this game. This is a must-win game for the Bengals. Get to 500. But I think it is winnable if that offense from the Chiefs-Ravens games comes. This this Eagles defense has been very good. They're tenth, uh, top 10 in passing yards allowed, meaning they've allowed the 10th least amount of yards. And uh, so this may be a game that Chase Brown and Zach Moss have to have to put it together because they have a bad run defense, but they have a great passing defense. So uh, they've had fumbling issues. Can't be doing that, Zach and Chase, but I, I would like to see them get some good runs in early, get some touchdowns, put points up on the board. You're going to have to start quick again. None of these slow starts. All these games are going to have to be quick, quick, fast. I mean, uh, what, do, what do you see from the Eagles maybe that the Bengals you think should watch out for? Yeah, I mean, definitely the pass. I mean, obviously, one of the things that you guys very much specialize in this season is the pass still, just because obviously your run game is a lot weaker than it was last season, uh, just because you're without Joe Mixon and you had Zach Moss be a replacement. Not that I think Chase Brown is a bad replacement or Zach Moss, but I definitely don't think they're on the same tier level as Joe Mixon. I mean, Joe Mixon just yesterday, or well, it's not yesterday now, a couple of days ago when they played on Sunday, he pretty much carried that Houston Texans game. He had more yards than freaking uh, 
uh, <laughs> CJ Stroud did. I mean, when they when they threw up the final score, instead of throwing up CJ Stroud's numbers in comparison, usually they do the quarterback for uh, the quarterback comparisons, they threw up Joe Mixon's numbers against um, uh, Jordan Love's numbers. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. So, but point being is that I think that you guys will probably have to worry about the passing and really try to focus on the run. And I know it's been kind of not the key point of your offense this season, just because obviously your offense has really been focused on the wide receivers, Joe Burrow passing. We've had games where, you know, Joey B threw what five, six touchdowns in the one game a couple weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago. I don't even remember when it was, but obviously very much aerial passing in uh, Cincinnati and Philly's very good at countering that. Another thing you guys really have to worry about is the weapons that Philadelphia has. So that defense that obviously we've talked about with Philly, we also should have to talk about the defense with Cincinnati as well, because AJ Brown is back obviously with the Philadelphia Eagles and Saquon Barkley has been lighting it up over in Philadelphia as well. So you have a really top tier wide receiver on your hands that you have to worry about. And you also have a top tier running back. You have to worry about now, obviously in comparison to Cincinnati with having a top tier wide receiver in Jamar chase and a second top tier wide receiver in T Higgins. Uh, it's kind of weird because the matchups are kind of different than, you know, it's not like you T Higgins is out and you have chase and Joe Mixon versus AJ Brown and Saquon. As if like Mixon was still here, you have two top wide receivers against a top wide receiver and a top running back. So I think you have to worry about both. I think you have to figure out a way to capitalize and neutralize both offensive weapons that, that they have and really focus on some of the other uh, players that Philadelphia has like Devonta Smith and, you know, try to hope that maybe by having them focus more on Devonta Smith, maybe he'll struggle a little bit more. I mean, he hasn't been having, he, he didn't have a real good game last week, but um, obviously he it's Devonta Smith. He's going to bounce back. But if you, if you, you really got to worry about those, those two players, obviously, I mean, I feel like that goes without saying and um and yeah, I, I think really focus on that defense. I, I don't have any like key players or anything like it is like Pittsburgh or anything like that, but mm-hmm. but I definitely would uh yeah. I mean it's gonna it's not gonna be an easy matchup. I feel like Philly, although I feel like a lot of people are talking about Washington, I feel like nobody's talking about Philly right now. They're only one game behind Washington. Uh Washington sits at five and two, Philly sits at four and two, and so I mean that that division is up up for grabs between those two. I mean I, I'm I'm still pretty set on Washington winning it, but I mean Philly obviously is a very 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 good team, and you really need to have it figured out in order to, you know, run with them. Yeah, Philly Philly I haven't decided if I'd rather them force them to run more or force them to pass more because uh, either way you're gonna you're gonna be facing someone elite, and Jalen Hurts can run too. So that's something different. The last two, the last two weeks, we the D line has looked a lot better, but this is going to be their greatest challenge. They have in against the Giants, they face like Tyrone Tracy Jr. and Eric Gray. Against the Browns, they face Nick Chubb. Yes, but Nick Chubb was coming off injury, only had eleven attempts. So another difference. Jalen Hurts can run with the ball. Daniel Jones and Deshaun Watson can't really run with the ball, and that was where Dorian Thompson Robinson was hurting. Uh, the Bengals defense was when he would take off with the ball. Um, So that part does make me nervous. I I don't know. Lou Lou is going to have to cook something up and Lou is still on the hot seat. In my opinion, I think, I think both Lou and Zach are on the hot seat until this Bengals team gets back to where it's supposed to be, where we expected it to be uh, competing in the playoffs. So yeah, it's, it's going to be rough, but these are all going to be must-win games for those two. Yeah. Uh, one advantage one advantage the Bengals may have is Jordan Maliot, Malita, Maliot. The Eagles' left tackle is on uh, – I apologize. I can normally say his name, no problem. Just a little nervous. But anyway, he's on IR, so Trey Hendrickson will be going up against a backup on that left side. Uh, so they may be able to get to Jalen Hurts. Sam Hubbard has appeared to kind of get back to where he used to be. Uh, he said the Browns game was the first game where he really felt like himself, and he got an interception. So uh, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll be okay. But you gotta, you gotta stop Philly early and force them to get one-dimensional on offense because 
if they can survive, if they can stay two dimensional, they'll kill you in the run and the passing game. And I don't know which way uh, we'd prefer. I think you'd prefer them to run the ball more, but we'll see. Limit those big plays. That's going to be the most important part. Yeah, you got to figure out a way to even like limit Jalen Hurts, just because you know if you you allow Jalen Hurts to make the big plays, then you're you're uh, you're done for. I mean, even uh, I think Kenneth Game while I'm looking at his stats, I think after Saquon, you know played for a while. I think, I mean, Kenneth Gainwell still had 13 attempts for 56 yards. So obviously not the same numbers as like a Saquon Barkley, who in that game had 17 carries for 176 yards and a touchdown. But I mean, obviously it's still another running back that they want, like that they, they rely on as well. So obviously, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of weapons in Philadelphia that they could use on offense. And that's just, and that's just the running backs. I mean, in the wide receiver room, you still got Brown and, and uh, Devonta Will. Uh, or I almost said Devonta Wilson because I was looking at Johnny Wilson. Jahan Dotson is also another guy that isn't really getting a lot of mentions, but also could have a boom game. You never know. They've been utilizing a lot more of AJ Brown and um, Devonta Smith, but you you get one of those players go down, it, it could easily go to to Dotson as well. So. But he's somebody to maybe be on the outside looking in on just because he's not getting the same reps as like those guys are. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a rough one. It's gonna it's gonna be this is gonna be the real test, I think, for what this Bengals offense can do. Um, Joe's gonna have to put it together. He's mm-hmm. gonna have to figure it out. Zach's gonna have to call a good game. Uh, the defense is gonna defense has improved the last two games. We're gonna need to see that again. So. Uh, See what happens. I'm nervous for it. We'll talk about it a little bit more later this week, probably, as we get to know more of the details. But um, yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not super excited about this one. I haven't been super excited about the last two because I think the last two they were losable, and I think this one is the same way. But we'll see what happens. It's it's gonna be rough out there. They've they've got a good good defense. Quinion Mitchell has been great. Their first round pick, Cooper DeJean, when he's played, has been great as well. Um, there's there's no easy there's no easy passes in this game. I don't think, but I'm I'm confident we I'm mildly confident we will be competitive. Mildly confident. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. So, that's, that's good. That's, that's good. where I'm at. So, um, I have nothing else to say, Chus. Do you have anything you want to add before we go into the spiel? Uh, yeah, just real quick. Um, just want to, because I do this on every show, wanted to mention the, the gear that I'm wearing today. Uh, gear for this week is a Kenny Pickett pit shirt. Uh, cause mm. you know, Pitt plays Syracuse tomorrow in a ACC division or not division ACC conference matchup and uh, Pitt is still six and oh Eli Holstein's really filling the role of what Kenny Pickett was when he was at Pitt in 2021 on top of that the Eagles are coming off of a big win and obviously we know that the Eagles are the uh, the bearer of Kenneth Shane Pickett now so that being said I'm wearing my Kenny Pickett Pitt shirt today uh, it's also it was also pretty warm, so I'm glad I got the opportunity to wear this. But we'll we'll see what other uh, gear I wear because I have a lot of gear. I have some jerseys I haven't worn yet. I got some Steeler jerseys I haven't worn yet. I've got some. Hoodies. Where's that Jordan Battle jersey at? It's not a jersey or shirt. Uh, well, it's not it's not cold out, so uh, uh, I'll have to. I, I still forgot to buy it. I forgot to buy it. I got to get that at some point. Still, I still plan. Chat, to blow them up. Blow them up, chat. Don't, yeah, chat. Blow me up. But yeah, no, I'll, I'll get it at some point. I will. I still plan to. But um, but yeah, I uh, I have some gear, different things like that that I will be planning on wearing. So, but yeah, Kenny well, Pickett pit shirt today, guys. Hail to Pitt tomorrow. Let's go, Pitt. Curtis Rourke. Well, Curtis Rourke is injured now, but Indiana Hoosiers also undefeated. So big, big. Uh, I'm not even really a college football fan, but shout out to the Indiana Hoosiers. Okay, anyway. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, 
Uh, thank you for listening to today's show. If you enjoyed, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. We can be found anywhere you listen to podcasts and on YouTube at No Butts Show. Our social media pages are No Butts underscore show on Instagram and No Butts Show on TikTok. My Twitter is Josh underscore Butts underscore 2001. And if you would like to reach us, you can email us at Bold Moose Podcast 2. That's the number two at gmail.com. Finally, our spread shop will be in the description, so check out the merch. Once again, if you enjoyed today's show, like, comment, and subscribe. We are only 60 subscribers away from 500. If we hit it by the end of the month, I will do a giveaway for the month of November. So make sure you subscribe. Until next time, go do something nice for someone.